Princess Charlene, 43, shared a few adorable pictures with her 334,000 followers on Instagram showing her twin children Prince Jack and Princess Gabriella, 6, enjoying a day out at Monaco's annual dog show on Saturday. The children were depicted in the company of their aunt Princess Caroline and cousins Charlotte Cassirogi and Melanie Antoinette de Massey while petting and admiring pets. However, the attention of many of Charlene's online followers focused on the fact that little Gabriella was pictured wearing a pink splint on a wheelchair. Some expressed their concern and well wishes for the young royal who, despite her injury, appeared very happy to be out and about in the company of dogs. One Instagram user wrote, what happened to her leg? Poor thing another said, what's the matter with Princess Gabriella? A third asked, oh my? Gabriella, is in a cast in a wheelchair. Did she have a fall? Sending all good wishes for her speedy recovery so that she can romp and play again whenever she is healed. Another added, adorable pictures, I hope Princess Gabriella is okay yet another said, shame what happened to little Bella's leg. Finally, one wrote, she tms a little child it happens. Children always broke things as growing up. Get well soon cutie. Doting mum Charlene did not mention Princess Gabriella's injury when sharing the snaps from the dog show, taking place at Monaco's Espace Fonfiel exposition area. She wrote as caption, spending time with their auntie HRH Princess Caroline and their cousins at the annual dog show. The Royal Palace did not issue a statement to explain why the six-year-old was wearing a splint. A source claimed to People magazine the injury is just a sprain. They added, she took a bad fall while playing. Princess Gabriella and Prince Jacques day out came a few days after the twins started attending Transection Oys DTM Assis Nicolas Bar Copyright, FANB, a Catholic school in Monaco. The children were accompanied to school only by their father Prince Albert II, 63, as Charlene remains in South Africa while fighting a severe ENT infection. The former Olympian traveled to her homeland in May, where she had planned to stay for a few days to carry out important conservation work with her foundation. However, she remained stuck there after developing an infection following a sinus lift and bone graft held in preparation for dental implants. She has since undergone three procedures to heal, including a four-hour-long surgery on August 13. As it emerged earlier this month, Princess Charlene was also rushed to hospital on September 1. The Mornigosk Palace said in a statement, on the night of September 1, Her Serene Highness Princess Charlene of Monaco, was taken to hospital after becoming ill due to complications from a serious ENT infection. Her Highness is being closely followed by her medical team, who say her condition is reassuring. She was discharged within the same week. National Gallery is putting on a show next year to mark the centenary of Freud's birth. The Queen's portrait will be one of over 60 works borrowed from museums and private collections from around the world. The painting received mixed reviews when it was completed, with one critic saying it made Her Majesty look like one of her corgis. The British sovereign, however, kept her thoughts on the portrait to herself and never said publicly whether she approved or disapproved. According to William Fever's biography of Freud, the Queen said to the artist when he delivered his painting to her in person, very nice of you to do this. I tm they very much enjoyed watching you mix your colors. The exhibition will examine the way in which Freud changed his practice over time. The National Gallery said the aim was to present new perspectives on Freud TMS art, focusing on his tireless and ever-searching commitment to the medium of painting. The Queen attended a number of sittings for the portrait at St. James's Palace between May 2000 and December 2001. It wasn't commissioned, but done on Freud's request as a gift to the Queen. He asked Her Majesty to put on her diamond crown for the sittings the one that she wears for the opening of the British Parliament and in her portrait on stamps and banknotes. The artists said this was because he had always liked the way her head looks on stamps, wearing a crown and he wanted to make some reference to the extraordinary position she holds, of being the monarch. 
The portrait received a withering critique from Robin Simon, the editor of the British Art Journal. Writing in The Sun, he commented, it makes her look like one of her corgis who has suffered a stroke. It is a huge error for Lucian Freud. He has gone a portrait too far. Royal Family account shared three throwback photographs showing a few moments where the Queen has been pictured behind the lens to mark the occasion. One image features Prince Charles and Princess and being shown how to use a camera by the Queen, taken at Balmoral in 1952. Many claim the image is significantly poignant as currently the Queen and fellow senior royals are at Balmoral amid crisis talks related to the Prince Andrew scandal. The second image featured the head of state behind a yellow compact camera during a visit to the South Sea Islands of Tuvalu in 1982, and features the monarch with the late Duke of Edinburgh at her side. The third showing the Queen posing with the same camera originates from Lindsay Park stud in South Australia, and was taken in 1977. The post from the royal family account comes as Kate, Duchess of Cambridge and Prince William marked the occasion by recognizing some of Britain's youngest photographers. The Duchess is a keen amateur photographer and often shares images she has taken of her children to mark their birthdays, or occasions such as their participation in the Big Butterfly Count earlier this month. In a Twitter post, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge tweeted to mark the National Day by saying, Photography has an amazing ability to create a lasting record of what we have all experienced and are experiencing. That TMS why this hashtag World Photography Day we wanted to celebrate the youth of the hashtag hold still 2020 photography project and share images from the youngest finalists. The hashtag hashtag hold still 2020 refers to a photography initiative coined by the couple during lockdown, where they asked members of the public to capture images that reflect the COVID-19 pandemic to be used in a digital exhibition. The Duchess whittled more than 31,000 entries down to a top 100 alongside a panel of five judges, and some images from the youngest finalists were shared on social media today. Alongside the series of images, the tweet reads, There is so much talent, creativity, and curiosity displayed in each and every one of these pictures. The youngest photographer, four-year-old Connie, from Cheltenham, Gloucestershire snapped her mum administering an at-home haircut to her partner. While another image shared by 17-year-old Marcella, shows her mother homeschooling her little brother when schools were closed for much of the pandemic. The images are curated in a book released by the Duchess earlier this year entitled, Hold Still, a portrait of our nation in 2020 which features the 100 final portraits selected from the entrants. The book, which explains why the concept means so much to Kate, topped the bestseller list on its first day of release. The introduction reads, when we look back at the COVID-19 pandemic in decades to come, we will think of the challenges we all faced the loved ones we lost, the extended isolation from our families and friends and the strain placed on our key workers. But we will also remember the positives, the incredible acts of kindness, the helpers and heroes who emerged from all walks of life, and how together we adapted to a new normal. Through Hold Still, I wanted to use the power of photography to create a lasting record of what we were all experiencing to capture individuals, stories and document significant moments for families and communities as we lived through the pandemic. The National Portrait Gallery, London, is the home and archive of the images and in a tweet they referred to this being an honor, and stated it was lovely to see these brilliant images again.